I remember when I was little, the story I was told that at the end of every rainbow, there's a leprechaun with a pot of gold. So I searched and searched and searched again, until the end of the rainbow I found. Yes, I found the very place. It disappeared into the ground. Yes, I found the end of the rainbow, only to be told that some sneaky little thief had nicked my pot of gold. So home alone I trudged, still skint and feeling forlorn. The moral of the story? Never trust a leprechaun. Here, this is what you're looking for, right? Sounds like we go. It looks like we go. <laughs> it smells like we go. The Leprechaun. The much loved and sometimes feared magical creature of Irish folklore and legend. Tiny little men with long beards, dressed in green, and obsessed with rainbows, pots of gold, and of course, shoemaking. Leprechauns were once believed to pervade the Irish countryside. But this picture is a common perception today of this famous Irish creature. Leprechauns have transformed so much over the centuries that much of what made the little people special in the original tale has been forgotten. But today, we're going to go into the depths of Irish folklore, so stick around, don't forget to like, then subscribe. Legends about leprechauns are mostly about human beings catching a leprechaun, then trying to attain their wealth. The most common story involves a boy or farmer who finds a leprechaun and forces him to tell where he has hidden his gold. The leprechaun is obliged to show him the spot, which is below a tree or plant. As the boy is without a shovel, he ties a red cloth around the nearby tree or plant and makes the leprechaun swear he will not remove the indicator. When the boy returns with the shovel, he finds that there are now many red cloth, and the leprechaun has vanished. Thus, the leprechaun managed to trick the boy and maintain the possession of his goat. Another similar story tells of a girl who catches the leprechaun and makes him lead her to his treasure, but along the way, hears a noise to which the leprechaun tells her there are bees chasing her. When she turns around to look, the leprechaun disappears. According to some other legends, a leprechaun carries two leather pouches. He has a silver shilling in one, which returns to his pouch whenever it has been given. The other pouch has a gold coin, which is set to turn to leaves or ashes once the leprechaun is set free. Another interpretation of events after humans find and catch leprechauns is the offering of three wishes, to which the capturer goes insane or is tricked as his wishes backfire. A popular story of this sort is that of Seamus. Seamus was a man from County Mayo who caught a leprechaun and was offered wishes. He chose to be the richest man on a tropical island. His wish was said to have come true, but there was a catch. There were no pubs, shops, or other people on the island. Seamus got bored and eventually wished to be back in Ireland. Given all of these leprechaun stories, all of them have more or less the same moral. Getting rich quick doesn't work out in the long run. Stealing is wrong and don't mess with the Irish fairy folk. The Leprechaun The origin of the word leprechaun is the old Irish word leucorpane, meaning small body. Another definition has linked the modern name to leucorpan, a word from the 8th century which is defined as sprite or pygmy. And finally, the word leprechaun has been connected to Leif Brogan, meaning shoemaker. Please excuse me pronunciation, I'm not Irish. This definition is also a possibility as many stories about leprechauns have shown their profession to be cobblers of the fairy world. The word lubricin, another word associated with leprechaun, first was written in English in 1604 in the play The Honest by Thomas Middleton and Thomas Decker. The line from the play states, As for your Irish Lubrison, that spirit whom by preposterous charms thy lust hath raised in a long circle. So what were the ancient leprechauns like? Leprechauns are thought to have been one of the many types of inhabitants of the fairy forts or fairy rings in ancient Ireland. Some say the merry tricksters may even be a modern incarnation of the Euro-Celtic god, Luck. Luck was said to be the sun god, patron of arts and crafts, and leader of the Tuatha Dé Danann, people of the goddess Danu. 
Medieval Irish manuscripts, believed to be associated with leprechauns, suggest that leprechauns were originally beings that lived underwater, and contrary to the modern depiction, they weren't all male. They were depicted as warriors with ferocious appetites, and the female leprechauns were especially engrossed with luring away human men for secret adventures. These characteristics seem to continue at least until the aforementioned writing in 1604. Early leprechauns were described as sly old men that wore red suits and were often found working on a solitary shoe. Leprechauns prefer to spend time alone rather than interacting with other fairy creatures or even other leprechauns. Their friendless nature, perhaps, was also partly due to others avoiding them. Early leprechauns were also thought to be particularly mischievous, house-haunting drunkards. These characteristics were later passed on to the leprechaun's cousins, the Chloricon, an Irish fairy that is always drunk and rude. The Chloricon got the blame for noisy nights and messy homes. By 1825, the leprechaun population was limited to only males. T. Croft and Crocker fairy traditions and legends of the south of Ireland provided more insight on traits of these mythical creatures. They are often described as bearded old men dressed in green and wearing buckled shoes. Sometimes they wear a pointed cap or hat and may smoke a pipe. The leprechauns of the time were thought to be particularly stylish. Both Samuel Lover and William Butler Yeath made mention of the importance leprechauns placed in their appearance. Lover wrote that a leprechaun was quite a bow in his dress, notwithstanding for he wears a red square cut coat, richly laced with gold, waistcoat and inexpressible of the same, cocked hat, shoes and buckles. Following that, Heath later added, he is something of a dandy and dresses in a red coat with seven rows of buttons, seven buttons on each row, and wears a cocked hat, upon whose pointed end he is wont in the northeastern counties. The 18th century poem by William Allingham, entitled The Leprechaun or Fairy Shoemaker, further promoted the idea that in the fairy realm occupations were chosen by group, and leprechauns were in charge of keeping the rest of the community's feet happy. He also provided a hint to people searching for leprechauns. The presence of leprechauns can be noted by their tapping sounds as they work. Lay your ear close to the hill. Do you not catch the tiny clamor? Busy click of an elf and hammer. Voice of the leprechaun singing shrill as he merrily plies his trade. Allingham is often credited as the creator of the modern leprechaun. A short man with the red beard, a green hat, in which a golden four-leaf clover is tucked, and a green suit with a large buckle on its belt. By this time, the perception of leprechauns as wealthy, clever folk was a common notion. Thus, the old wee fellows were depicted in stories with a strong interest in protecting their gold from greedy humans that sought it out. Leprechauns are supposed to offer bribes to humans if caught in order to regain their freedom. But these days, leprechauns are now understood to be the fairy tales of the past and fanciful stories to tell when one sees a rainbow. But these little guys still have a hold on the modern society. From General Mills' serial, Lucky Charms is Lucky, the Leprechaun, to horror or comedy movies that are focused on monstrous tricksters of a leprechaun to torment adults. Leprechauns may not really provide us a treasure of gold or silver, but they certainly have provided richness to Irish folklore. If you liked our video, don't forget to subscribe and follow our channel for more videos like this one.